We had the third and final presidential debate of 2016 that happened last night. Chris Wallace was the moderator. Um, it was interesting. I think it was very interesting. Uh, we have some results that have rolled in. Now, yet again, according to the snap polls online, so in other words, the unscientific polls online, which I don't think are worth nothing, but they're obviously not worth as much as the actual scientific polls. Duh. Uh, but Donald Trump won most of those. Uh, he also won the focus groups. He won the focus group on CNN. He won the focus group on Fox News. Uh, here's where he lost all of the actual scientific polls. So YouGov did a poll, and it was 39 to 49. Hillary Clinton won. Uh, you had CNN ORC do a poll, and that was 52 to 39. So, yet again, you have somewhat mixed results, but according to the the most accurate way of measuring it, uh, it appears like Hillary Clinton won. Now, my takeaway from it, I, I don't know, I, I, had, I had weird feelings on it. So, I first watched it, and I gotta be honest, I was live-tweeting it and kind of fact-checking and making jokes at the same time, so I didn't... I didn't really have a good sense or perception of, of what I thought happened. Uh, then, as everybody knows who follows me on Twitter, because I've complained about it multiple times, I, I have to, for the show, I gotta go back, watch it again, clip it out, so that I can come here right now for you lovely people and, and do the breakdown. So I had to watch it twice. Um, and the second time I watched it, I got the sense that Hillary Clinton won. The first time, it was kind of amorphous in my head. The second time, I, I thought Hillary Clinton won. And that's not to say that Trump didn't have his moments, because he did. In fact, he had some moments where, when I was live-tweeting it, I was just grossed out by what Hillary was saying, because it was so disingenuous and, and wrong. Um, but overall, I think she came out on top. And the reason why is, so there were a few issues where, the first time I watched it, uh, I... I was giving Hillary a little shit because I, you know, she was, she loves to go back and forth and flip flop eight zillion times, as does Trump. But uh, specifically on the issue of guns and the primaries, oh, I'm so progressive, so progressive on guns, and then now it's like super centrist. But when you listen to it in isolation, as many people do, because not everybody's political, a political junkie, a lot of her answers really were kind of tailored to moderate sensibilities, and it, you know. I mean, I think she should be she should be progressive almost across the board, but it sounded like her positions made sense on a, a abortion, for example. So they try to nail her. Chris Wallace tries to nail her on the issue of abortion, and she says, "Well, actually, no. Uh, so I'm in favor of Roe versus Wade. Of course, I would never overturn it. I want to stand up for uh, women's rights. But under Roe versus Wade, you have uh, states are allowed to regulate uh, abortion later on." So, she takes this moderate stance where you listen to it and you go, okay, that sounds decent. Then she talks about uh, guns, and she says, look, I believe in the Second Amendment. I believe in the Second Amendment. I lived in Arkansas for 18 years. Of course I believe in it. Uh, that doesn't mean you can't have sane, reasonable regulations that go hand in hand with that. So again, I listen to that and I go, okay, that makes sense. Now again, those are two issues where I happen to actually agree with Hillary in the sense that I am kind of moderate, like, I think there's a nice middle path on the issue of gun reform. I wouldn't, like, ban all guns, nor do I think, can you? Um, so, I, I, I'm kind of with her on that, and I'm also kind of with her on abortion. I like the fact that she stands up for it, but she, she, um, is willing to acknowledge that there are some instances where it's not crazy for people to say, yeah, you know, regulation makes sense. So, maybe I'm biased in that I agreed with her on those topics, but when she did... She spoke about that, she looked like she had command of the material, and he looked like he's just fucking flailing all over the place. Uh, and also when it came to the direct attack, so what she did well all night was, she kept, whenever there was something where she was cornered, she would immediately find a way to flip the discussion and go on the offense. Now, again, for somebody who's a political junkie like myself, and somebody who does this shit for a living, I can perceive when it's a hacky pivot. And in fact, I'm going to discuss uh, one of those a little later. Uh, but I don't know if that lands with the general public that, oh, you just did like a rhetorical trick there. Like you just pivoted away from the issue you were discussing and then you went uh, full speed ahead and went on the offense. And then Trump, because he's not that bright, he always falls for it. So instead of, 
you know, going back and hammering away on the original point where she was pinned, he would start playing defense on the thing that he was called out for. So, I got the sense she won. I don't think it was a crazy, you know, knockout. I don't think it was a landslide. A lot of people say, oh, landslide, oh my god, she won so convincingly. I don't agree with that. There were points where, you know, Trump yet again got her on Syria... I think her Russia fear-mongering was so over the top and so ridiculous that any person in the liberal base with any sense was going, come on, really? So there were many areas where, uh, yet again, every it, he would say some stuff on NAFTA and Wall Street and her donors where you gotta go, mm, yeah, he's kinda right on that one. So I, I don't think it was a knockout, but looking at everything in its totality, I would say that she won. And the, it, So, main point is this. He definitely didn't win overwhelmingly. I'm open to the idea of some people thinking, well, I, I think he won. Okay, fine. But he definitely didn't win overwhelmingly, and he needed to win overwhelmingly in order to really have a good shot here because he's down 5.5 points on average in the polls, and he's running out of time. He's running out of time. He did a horrible job on the sexual assault issue when that was raised, because now there are many people accusing him of uh, sexual assault, doing what he said he did in the tapes. Didn't didn't have a good answer, didn't sound good. Uh, Hillary uh, appeared really rehearsed, and I don't mean rehearsed in the negative way in this sense, although uh, usually when I use the word rehearsed, I do mean it in a negative way. But uh, it appears like she studied up on the way to attack him, because when she would go after him, she would just list off, like, six things like that. It's almost like she's been watching Secular Talk and, and going, okay, so just keep attacking, keep pummeling, and be quick and to the point and witty. And that's what she did. So, you know, she'd call out, she'd call him out, and in a 30-second span, you'd get five things that he was, he did that were preposterous, and you'd go, ooh, you're kind of reeling right now, aren't you, Don? So, uh, overall, I do think Hillary Clinton won. Donald Trump, I think, needed to win in a landslide in order to uh, give himself the best chance for the election. Do I think the election's over, over? No. But again, Donald's on the ropes now. You can't be down 5.5 points on average, you know, when the election is really not that far away. Uh, he's banking on a story big enough to tank her that tops his sexual assault, grab them by the pussy, I don't even wait story. And the thing is, even if there are things in the Podesta emails that uh, should be bigger than that, and we've covered a lot, I think the Podesta emails, those are real stories, there are a lot of bombshells on Syria, on the way her team views the progressive base, so on and so forth. I, I don't think that's enough to top the public interest and outrage on Trump scandal because this is the first scandal we've seen land this much. Even when Trump said, you know, hey, I want to kill civilians, I want to bring back torture, I want to pull out of the Geneva Conventions, that was one one hundredth the coverage that you know we're getting now when he said grab him by the pussy. And maybe that has a lot to do with our celebrity obsessed culture and and anything that has to do with sex somehow, you know, uh, makes an impression and policy doesn't make an impression as much. But all those things put together means he's in trouble. He, he needs something to happen to bounce back to have a shot. But as of right now, she's the overwhelming favorite uh, to win the election because I think he needed to dominate this debate to have a chance, and I don't think he did that.